Hi, this is July 16, 2012, and I'm here today in front of you to, you know, discuss the inflation data which came out today, uh, and what happened after that, what happened uh, with the Indian, Indian industry, and what happened with uh, business people, basically the major business houses and major business organizations in India. So what happened is that the uh, headline inflation slowed a little bit in the month of June uh, if you compare it with the month of May. In month of May the uh, wholesale price index was 7.55% and in June it came out at 7.25%. So this industry people and other guys are saying that this reduction in inflation rate, so called inflation rate which is being measured by this phone index number of wholesale price index is you know lower now which is you know uh, lower than the expectation so it is now time for the Reserve Bank of India to cut their interest rate and revive the economy pumping in a lot of money basically and give this lend this money to the business people so that they can start their uh, faltered you know capital projects you know which are in trouble because of RBI's you know tight monetary policy um, since long what is happening is uh, in mainstream neoclassical economics also this concept is very famous that there is some kind of a trade-off between inflation and economic growth so you know since last one year or so you know um, when RBI started increasing the economic uh, increasing the bank rate and interest rate what is happening is the the you know uh, phony economic growth rate numbers in, in, in Indian economy are basically falling so everybody is saying that look there is a trade-off between inflation and economic growth so if you want to you know grow your economy then you have to tolerate some kind of inflation some positive number, let's say, you know, 5% or 7% that, you know, economists and prime minister and finance minister and everybody is saying that that is the comfort level of inflation, you know, and uh, we must tolerate that much if you want economic growth. And then they are saying that, okay, if you want to combat inflation, then economic growth will also come down necessary as it is happening right now. <clears throat> so in this video blog, what I want to do is that I want to investigate this alleged trade-off between inflation and economic growth which is being discussed by the mainstream economists and other guys so if you understand the real sound economics and if you use a little bit of common sense then you will see that this whole trade-off between inflation and economic growth is completely phony there is no trade-off between inflation and economic growth as I will you know, uh, tell you at the end of my video blog but let's first uh, try to understand that why this, you know, trade-off is there, you know, in the minds of this mainstream neoclassical economist and other financial pundits. Why they see this trade-off? Okay, so they see this trade-off because, you know, they are basically using faulty concepts to analyze this whole phenomenon. They begin their discussion with the faulty concept of inflation and economic growth and that is the reason because they are starting with faulty premises so that's why their conclusions are also faulty so they're beginning with faulty logical concept and that's why their conclusions are also wrong so what faulty concepts they are using and also they are using two concepts over here one is inflation another is economic growth so let's see you know what problems these concepts are having so we begin with inflation you know how the mainstream economic economics defines inflation is very interesting to see so what they say if you you know pick up any mainstream economic introductory textbook like you know Paul Samuelson economics or Gregory Banking's principles of economics then you'll find that they are saying that inflation is a rise in general price level so basically their definition is that then when prices are rising economy-wise then that's inflation. Now the problem with this is that this whole definition focuses on the effects of inflation, not on the causes of inflation or not on inflation itself but the consequences of inflation and that also one of the chief consequences of inflation and that is rising prices because there are many consequences of inflation. So what is inflation? If you really want to understand what inflation is, 
then I will advise you to go and read Henry Hazlitt's one page article inflation in one page in that one page Henry Hazlitt basically say everything about inflation you know but these people this imbecile politicians and bureaucrats and mainstream neoclassical economists they cannot even read that one page because it is politically incorrect doesn't matter let's see what Hanslitz said and what Austrian economists are saying and what is the real definition of inflation basically inflation is when the supply of money and credit increases out of thin air without any backing of any kind of commodity money like gold or silver or any other market chosen money commodity so and for this you have to understand that RBI central bank RBI and its monetary policy is entirely responsible because they are the ones who are in total control they have they have the monopoly over the money supply they are the ones who are issuing all the money which is circulating into Indian economy so when they are creating money out of thin air what is happening is that is inflation that is creating that is increasing the supply of money and if you assume that the demand for money is remaining constant then what is going to happen is that is going to reduce the value of money that is going to reduce the purchasing power of money so what will happen now you have to trade more notes more this fiat paper currency notes against the given amount of real economic goods so so if you look from the side of real economic goods then it will feel like prices are rising but as i say prices are not actually rising it is the fiat paper currency rupee which is losing value as purchasing power is gone down so this one this is one issue this is inflation you know uh increase in the supply of money and credit out of thin air rising prices is just one effect the other effect is the wealth transfer so the people who are receiving this freshly printed money first they are the ones who are going and purchasing economic goods out of market first when the prices are have not risen and as this newly freshly printed economic money is entering into the economy what is happening is that the prices will slowly start to rise sector by sector so when the money is reaching in the hands of those people who are at the end of this you know, chain, then those people are worse off because when they receive their freshly printed money, already the prices have gone up and the purchasing power of those you know, paper notes has gone down. So their real income hasn't gone up, their style of living is not increasing. In fact, their style of living has gone down and mostly what happens politicians and other you know well connected people with the government they receive the freshly printed money first bankers politicians and bureaucrats and other guys so they are basically stealing the wealth of this you know poor people who are doing a lot of hard work and creating this wealth producing this wealth so poor people are at the end of this chain so they lose politicians and other governmentally well connected people they benefit so this wealth transfer is going on this is the second effect of inflation and third effect of inflation is basically book by cycle business cycle when they print a lot of money RBI prints a lot of money that artificially suppresses the market interest rate and entrepreneurs get false signal they are duped by this cheap monetary policy they think that the real pool of saving is increasing and saving is basically available for investment so they go and take borrow a lot of money from the banks at lower interest rate and they start many long-term capital projects which are basically not sustainable in the long run because they are not backed up by any kind of real savings so when inflation goes very high and starts to you know go very high rpi will basically you know um, start increasing the market interest rate and when they do that what will happen is suddenly the borrowing cost of all these entrepreneurs goes up and they all realize that they made an error in starting all those long-term practical you know, capital projects so they are trapped you know they cannot finish their capital projects which they have started and that's where the you know bust arise recession will start and that will if if the government stop meddling then that will liquidate all the mail investment of the past boom and re economic and recover but you now government doesn't allow that to happen they keep on meddling and that's how they turn the recession into you know deep depression but anyways these are three main effects of inflation so this is faulty concept rising price is not inflation it is one chief consequence or consequences of inflation not 
inflation itself. Inflation is always rise in the supply of money, our and credit, our thin air. Okay, what is the second concept which you know this mainstream economists are using, which is faulty? You know the concept of economic growth. So for for mainstream economists, again, you pick up any you know um, mainstream textbook like uh, Gregory Mankiw, and you'll find that how they measure economic growth. So what they do is they take all the goods and services which have been produced in an economy in one year, and they combine them together, which is you know very you know dangerous and wrong thing to do. They combine them together, and then they multiply it by its market prices, by its market value, and then express the monetary figure as the national income and that's what they call economic growth GDP gross domestic product so what is wrong with all this thing is you know you have to understand in any you know exchange process there are two sides there are goods you know are the demand and supply of goods and services the real economic goods and the demand and supply of money so here what happens is two things can happen this economic growth number can go up if the price is rising or if the production of goods and services is rising. In fact, if the production of goods and services is rising, then the prices will go down and it is possible that the growth number will go down. And that's what actually happened and that's why all these people say that, oh, it's price deflation and, and all the mainstream economists will start hammering bells that we need to print a lot of money because the prices are falling. But that's not true. Now the growth number can go up when they are inflating, the RBI is inflating the currency and they are creating a lot of money out of thin air. So what happens is actually prices will go up, the production is not going down. So when price goes up, production is not going down. What will happen? The overall monetary figure of this growth will go up. So it will feel like the economy is growing, but it's not actually growing. It's just inflation that is taking place, right? So. That's why what happens when they print money, they think that this is economic growth and when they stop printing money, that growth figure will come down because prices are falling. So they think economic growth is stalling. But it's all, as I said, it's all faulty. It's not economic growth, it's not money printing. We are not going to eat money ultimately, right? Inflation is increasing the supply of money. So what can happen is basically because they use this faulty concept, so they see this trade-off. There is no actual trade-off, you know, between inflation and economic growth, and economic can grow without inflation very well. For that, what you require is first you need to have a free market capitalist system, and the second thing which you require is basically sound monetary system in the form of pure gold standard. In a pure gold standard, what will happen is the money supply will be very much stable, right? It, it may be rising by one or two percent according to the gold mining production, but it will not, you know, because gold cannot be produced out of thin air, it cannot be created out of thin air. So the money supply will be fairly stable, and on the other side, because you have a free market capitalist system, the production of real economic goods is rising. So, what will happen actually? That will bring down the prices steadily. And when the prices are falling, what is happening? People's real income is rising, people's standard of living is rising. So, without earning more money, your whatever nominal income you're having, its purchasing power is increasing. So that will bring out millions and billions of people out of poverty. They don't have to earn a lot of money. Whatever they're earning, you know, that wealth purchasing power is increasing steadily in a progressing economy, which is having a free market capitalist system and a sound monetary system in the form of your global standard. As I said, that is going to create growth for everyone, that is going to bring millions of people out of poverty. But these people, because they use this faulty concepts of inflation and economic growth, so they never allow this price deflation to take place, they never allow the real economic growth to take place. So same thing is happening now, as I said, the economy is, this monetary figures are stalling and Again, the business people and the government is clamoring for a lower interest rate and more money printing. So nothing is going to happen. This is just going to you know continue and prolong this you know crisis which is you know going on right now. It's just just going to create more inflation. One of the effect of this inflation will be rises prices in the future. Economy is never going to recover in this way as long as government is meddling into the economy, into the market, as long as they are not allowing this mal investment of pre, you know past booms to basically you know liquidate. Economy will never recover. All right, thank you very much for watching me, and I'll be back with more next time.